Radio-controlled helicopters are model aircraft which are distinct from RC airplanes because of the differences in construction, aerodynamics, and flight training. Several basic designs of RC helicopters exist, of which some are more maneuverable than others. The more maneuverable designs are often harder to fly, but benefit from greater aerobatic capabilities. Flight controls allow pilots to control the collective, the cyclic controls, and the tail rotor. Controlling these in unison enables the helicopter to perform the same maneuvers as full-sized helicopters, such as hovering and backwards flight, and many that full-sized helicopters cannot, such as inverted flight. The various helicopter controls are affected by means of small servo motors, commonly known as servos. A solid-state gyroscope sensor is typically used on the tail rotor control to counter wind and torque reaction-induced tail movement. Most newer helicopters have gyro stabilization on the other two axes of rotation as well. Such three-axis gyro is typically called a flibarless controller, so-called because it eliminates the need for a flibar. The engines typically used to be methanol-powered two-stroke motors, but electric brushless motors combined with a high-performance lithium polymer battery are now more common and provide improved efficiency, performance and lifespan compared to brushed motors, while decreasing prices bring them within reach of hobbyists. Gasoline and jet turbine engines are also used. Just like full-sized helicopters, model helicopter rotors turn at high speeds and can cause severe injuries. Several deaths have occurred as recently as 2013. Types of RC helicopters, common power sources of RC helicopters are glow fuel, electric batteries, gasoline and turbine engines. For the first 40 years, glow fuel helicopters were the most common type produced. However, in the last 10 years, electric powered helicopters have matured to a point where power and flight times have equaled glow fuel helicopters. There have been two main types of systems to control the main rotors mechanical mixing and cyclic collective pitch mixing. Most earlier helicopters used mechanical mixing. Today, nearly all RC helicopter use CCPM. Practical electric helicopters are a recent development but have rapidly developed and become more common, overtaking glow fuel helicopters in common use. Turbine helicopters are also increasing in popularity, although the high cost puts them out of reach of most people. Glow fuel Glow fuel, or nitro fuel helicopters have been made in several sizes over the years. These are referred to as the class of the helicopter. They include one half A class, 15 class, 30 class, 50 class, 60 class and 90 class. These class numbers originated from the size of engine used in the different models. For example, a helicopter with a 0.30 Aquilian engine is a 30 class and a helicopter with a 0.90 Aquilian engine was referred to as a 90 class helicopter. The bigger and more powerful the engine, the larger the main rotor blade that it can turn and hence the bigger the aircraft overall. Typical flight time for nitro helicopters is 7 a euro 15 minutes depending on the engine size and tuning. The maximum height of operation for RC helicopters be it glow fuel, gasoline, turbine or electric, is effectively limited to the height at which the model is still visible. Most quality radio control systems have a range of over a mile, when the model would be long out of sight. Electric Two small electric helicopters emerged in the mid-1990s. These were the Colt Whisper and the Kyoshi EP concept, flying on 7 a Euro 8 a 1.2 a Ni CAD batteries with brushed motors. However, the 540 sized brushed motors were on the limit of current draw, often 20 a Euro 25 amps on the more powerful motors, hence brush and commutator problems were common. Recent advancements in battery technology are making electric flying more feasible in terms of flying time. Lithium polymer batteries are able to provide the high current required for high performance aerobatics while still remaining very light. Typical flight times are for a Euro 12 minutes depending on the flying style and battery capacity. In the past electric helicopters were used mainly indoors due to the small size and lack of fumes. Larger electric helicopters suitable for outdoor flight and advanced aerobatics have become a reality over the last few years and have become very popular. 
their quietness has made them very popular for flying sites close to residential areas and in places such as Germany where there are strict noise restrictions. Nitro helicopters have also been converted to electric power by commercial and homemade kits. The smallest remote control production model helicopter made is the Piku's Extreme MX-1 sold at many toy stores, electronic stores and internet stores, costing about $30. The next smallest is the standard Picou's helicopter. Several models are in contention for the title of the smallest non-production remote-controlled helicopter, including the Pixelito family of micro-helicopters, the Prux Flyer family, and the micro-flying robot. Coaxial A recent innovation is that of coaxial electric helicopters. The system's simple direction control and freedom from torque induced you have, in recent years, made it a good candidate on small models for beginner and or indoor use. Models of this type, as in the case of a full-scale helicopter, eliminate rotational torque and can have extremely quick control response, both of which are very pronounced in a CCPM model. Most cheaper models do not have a swash plate, but instead use a third rotor on the tail to provide pitch control. These helicopters have no roll control and have limited mobility. While a coaxial model is very stable and can be flown indoors even in tight quarters, such a helicopter has limited forward speed, especially outdoors. Most models are fixed pitch, that is the collective pitch of the blades cannot be controlled, plus the cyclic control is only applied to the lower rotor. Compensating for even the slightest breeze causes the model to climb rather than to fly forward even with full application of cyclic. More advanced coaxial constructions with two swash plates and or pitch control have been realized as models in individual projects but have not seen the mass market as of 2014. Multirotor RC Helicopters More recently, multirotor designs have become popular in both the RC hobby and unmanned aerial vehicle research. These vehicles use an electronic control system and electronic sensors to stabilize the aircraft. With their small size and agile maneuverability, quadcopters can be flown indoors as well as outdoors. Increased availability and affordability of electronic stabilization systems as well as ease of both construction and control have made multirotor aircraft an appealing platform for amateur model aircraft projects. Radio gear, radio, small fixed pitch helicopters need a four channel radio. Although micro helicopters that utilize a two channel infrared control system also exist. While collective pitch models need a minimum of five channels, with six being most common. Because of the normal interaction of the various control mechanisms, advanced radios include adjustable mixing functions, such as throttle collective and throttle rudder. Radio prices vary from $50 a Euro $3,000 USD. Well-known manufacturers of helicopter-specific radio controllers include, JR, Spectrum, Futeba, Hitech, Samwa, Multiplex, and Oranger X. The original preferred user interface for helicopter-oriented RC transmitters at the beginning of the RC helicopter hobby, from the early 1970s through about 1990, was the so-called single stick, or knobby style of multi-channel RC transmitter possessing a single primary two-axis joystick with a special rotatable, self-centering knob atop the single joystick's shaft for all three of the helicopter's aerodynamic controls, combined into only one primary control mechanism. The horizontal-vertical joystick movements of such a joystick provide cyclic control, and the knob is used for operating the tail rotor control. Such radios became unavailable as factory built new units at the start of the 1990s, but newer units are still made by RC flying electronics hobbyists well into the 21st century in North America for their own personal use, for flying both RC helicopters and fixed-wing RC model aircraft. Modulation Early radio control systems used amplitude modulation to transmit their signals. In the late 70s, frequency modulation became more commonplace. PCM Pulse Code Modulation a scheme in which the commanded position for each servo is transmitted as a digitally encoded number. Manufacturers use their own proprietary system to encode this number with various levels of precision. JRUZPCM then SPCM. Futabi use PCM1024 on G3PCM. 
with PCM not all positions are broadcast at one time to save time. The odd-numbered positions are sent as absolute in one frame, with the even sent only as differences from their previous values. The next frame the opposite is done. PCM includes a checksum at the end of the frame to check the signal's validity. Hence, if there is interference and the signal arrives distorted at the receiver, utilizing the checksum it is able to know if it is the original. In case it is not, a feature called failsafe is implemented to set servo positions to a predefined position, or to hold them at the last valid position. PPM, Pulse Position Modulation a scheme in which the commanded position for each servo is transmitted as the duty cycle of the transmitted pulse is one per servo position. PPM is cheaper than PCM and is generally used in low-end helicopters. The lack of a fail-safe in PPM makes it more suited to small, less dangerous models. Higher-end radios offer PCM and PPM modulation for better compatibility with all radio receivers. Spread Spectrum Systems such as frequency hopping spread spectrum used by Futebl employ frequency hopping on the 2.4 GHz band instead of the various frequencies in the lower megahertz ranges. The advantage is that radios are no longer using a fixed frequency during flight, mitigating the risk of interference on that fixed frequency. Systems such as Spectrum and JR use the DSM2 direct sequence spread spectrum method where they transmit on a pair of fixed channels chosen when the radio and receiver are turned on. Any subsequent systems would avoid using these channels and continue searching for another unused pair of channels. With either method many radios can be transmitting at once without interfering with each other. The few Terba systems change frequency approximately every two milliseconds, so even if two transmitters are using the same channel they are not doing so for long. The pilot will not notice any abnormal behavior of the model in the 1 slash 500th of a second that they are interfering. This gives one the advantage of turning on a transmitter without regard to channels currently in use by other pilots' radios. One downside to 2.4 GH said is that precautions must be taken during installation since certain materials such as carbon fiber can mask the signal. In some cases, Satellite receivers with secondary antennas need to be used to maintain better line of sight with the transmitter radio. Another drawback is that a 2.4 GHZ standard has yet to evolve so that receivers and transmitters can be mixed regardless of their respective manufacturer. Controls Learning to fly a collective pitch RC helicopter takes time and practice. Many modelers join a club so they can be instructed by experienced RC pilots, or follow online guides. RC helicopters usually have at least four controls, roll, cyclic pitch, elevator, rudder and pitch throttle. For simple flight, the radio is usually configured such that pitch is around a 1 degree at 0% throttle stick, and somewhere around 10 degrees at 100% throttle stick. It is also necessary to modulate the throttle in conjunction with the pitch so that the model maintains a constant rotor speed. This is beneficial for consistent and smooth flight performance. If aerobatic 3D performance is desired, then automatic throttle, or idle up, mode of flight is used. In this mode, the collective pitch ranges from its negative limit at 0% throttle stick input, up to its positive limit at 100% throttle stick. The throttle, on the other hand, is modulated automatically to maintain a constant rotor speed and is usually at its lowest value when the throttle stick is centered and the pitch is zero. This mode allows the rotor to produce a thrust upwards which, when the model is inverted, allows sustained inverted flight. Usually a more advanced computer radio is used for this kind of flying, which allows customization of the throttle collective mix. The cyclic and your controls are not by definition different in these two modes though 3D pilots may configure their models to be much more responsive. Construction Construction is typically of plastic, glass-reinforced plastic, aluminium or carbon fiber. Rotor blades are typically made of wood, fiberglass or carbon fiber. Models are typically purchased in kit form from one of about a dozen popular manufacturers and take 5 to 20 hours to completely assemble. These model helicopters contain many moving parts analogous to those on full-size helicopters, from the swashplate to rotor and everything in between. 
the construction of helicopters has to be more precise than for fixed-wing model aircraft, because helicopters are susceptible to even the smallest of vibrations, which can cause problems when the helicopter is in flight. Additionally, the small size and low weight of a sea helicopters and their components means that control inputs, especially cyclic can have a very fast response, and cause a rotation rate much faster than the equivalent input might produce on a full-size aircraft. This quick response can make the model unnecessarily difficult to fly. For this reason, most model helicopters either have a flibber or electronic stabilizing equipment. To reduce mechanical complexity and increase precision of the control of the swash plate some model helicopters use cyclic collective pitch mixing. Competition Aerobatic helicopter flying has historically followed the FAR copyright DAO copyright rational copyright Ronautique international rules, which for helicopters are labeled F3C. These include a predetermined routine of hovering and aerobatics. An advanced form of RC helicopter flying is called 3D. During 3D flying, helicopters perform advanced aerobatics, sometimes in a freestyle form, or in a predetermined set of moves drawn up by the organizers of the competition. There are a number of 3D competitions around the world, two of the best known being the 3D Masters in the UK and the Extreme Flight Championship in the USA. Commercial Applications Although RC helicopters are generally used by hobbyists for recreational purposes, they are sometimes used in applications such as low-altitude aerial photography, filming, policing, and remote observation or inspection. Some companies make RC helicopters specifically for these uses. U.S. Federal Aviation Administration regulations from 2006 grounding all commercial RC model and unmanned aerial vehicle flights have been upgraded to require formal FAA certification before being permitted to fly at any altitude in the United States. This move is being legally challenged. Commercial drone helicopter flights can be authorized, under restrictions, on a case-by-case -case basis through FAA certificates of authorization. Since 2007 over 1,400 COAs have been issued. New FAA regulations regarding small helicopters and UAVs are due in 2015. It will include new standards for registration, licensing, pilots, board sensors, and collision avoidance. Considering this and other types of applications that can reach quite high altitudes, it is also important for consumers to familiarize themselves with safety issues. Current guidelines for model aircraft in the United States rely on sea and avoid as the primary means to avoid collisions. Safety Model helicopters can be dangerous. There is a need to take heed of safety cautions that are highlighted in various publications due to the unnecessary deaths that occur in situations that are preventable. Modelers who fly at sanctioned sites are required to follow safety rules designated by national model aircraft organizations. In the United States, the Academy of Model Aeronautics publishes and updates safety rules for all model operations. Deaths A September 2013 incident in New York highlighted the possible dangers of remote-controlled model helicopters when a 19-year-old enthusiast, who was very experienced in flying remote-controlled helicopters, died after one of his helicopter's blades struck his head. In July 2013, a 41-year-old Swiss man was found dead in Moen Sea near his model helicopter. He had severe head and arm injuries. Miniature helicopters Miniature helicopters are remotely controlled helicopters with a weight ranging from 100 grams to just a few grams. Most in production are toys aimed at hobbyists and enthusiasts. In addition, there are many companies making prototypes for military and security applications. Miniature helicopters are popular demonstrations for the latest technologies in miniaturization. Examples of these types of miniaturized models are the E-Flight Blade CX and CX-2 and the Piku Z, a popular consumer model. Along with the Prux Flyer, a prototype and basis for mini production models. One final example is a one-off prototype and technology demonstration item that was developed by Seiko Epson, and demonstrated at the International Robot Exhibition in Tokyo is the Seiko Epson Micro Flying Robot. Miniaturization Techniques involve reduction of weight and complexity compared to normal-sized RC helicopters, use of densest power sources available, 
such as lithium polymer. Battery capacity only enough for a short flight, typically a few minutes. Miniature DC motors. Electronics made of SMD components and ASIC chips. Light plastics or carbon fiber fixtures and structure. Infrared control instead of radio. Auto stabilization with stabilizer bar, no servos. Directional control only by variable power to the tail rotor. References. External links RC Heli Flight School.